It's the most controversial plumbing fitting ever invented. DIYers love them. Old school plumbers hate them. And the debate rages on every job site in America. Today, we're talking about shark bite fittings. And I'm going to tell you the brutally honest truth. And if you'll hang around to the very end, I'll give you something one of their competitors told me about. Okay, for DIYers and homeowners, you need to know when it's safe to use these and when it's absolutely not. For my fellow plumbers, we're going to discuss the real reasons for failures and the one situation where I actually think they're a great solution. So let's get into it. First of all, let's be honest about why these are so popular. They are incredibly fast and easy to use. No torch, no glue, no special tools. You just push it on and you're done. Well, that's what a lot of homeowners and DIYers think. Now for DIYers making a simple repair, the appeal is obvious. It takes a difficult skill like soldering and turns it into a five second task. So if they're so easy, why do they fail? Well, the number one reason is improper pipe preparation. So I said earlier, really no tools, but that's not true. Inside every shark bite is a small rubber O-ring. If you don't perfectly deburr the end of the pipe after you cut it, that sharp edge can slice that O-ring during installation. Worse than that, it could just nick it. Now, it might not leak today, but it will fail. Now, this is a step that amateurs always skip, but here's the real reason most professional plumbers hate them. You can't use them behind a wall, period. Reputable plumbers will never install a push fitting in an inaccessible location, like inside a wall, in a ceiling, or maybe buried underground. Why? Because while a properly soldered joint is permanent, a shark bite relies on that single rubber O-ring. That little guy right there. And if it ever fails behind drywall, the damage will be catastrophic before you ever know it's there. Now, to be fair, when installed correctly on a properly prepped pipe, these things are incredibly strong. We've got one on a test rig that we use quite often. It'll handle hundreds of PSI, hundreds of pounds of pressure, far more than your house will ever have. The fitting itself, well, they're well engineered. The problem isn't the fitting, it's the high probability of human error. Okay, when humans install things, we make errors. And the high probability of human error during installation is what makes these bad. So is there ever a time that a pro should use one? Absolutely. I used to keep shark bite caps in my truck and in my toolboxes at work for one reason, emergencies. If I do have a major leak and I need to cap a line immediately to get the water back on to the rest of the house, well, I prepare for a permanent repair. A shark bite cap is the fastest, safest, easiest way to do it. It's a temporary tool for a specific problem. One of my favorite things about the shark bite fittings. And I learned about them at the airport. I was a superintendent for a company out at DFW airport. And we had these things called water control boxes. Now you never know when you're demoing plumbing in a project as big as an airport. If maybe somebody hits the wrong line, it's the wrong valve on the line that's open. Anything in the world can happen. But here's the thing. The quickest, easiest way to fix an emergency like that was always the shark bite fittings. If you've got a valve that doesn't hold all the way and you can't stop the water, well, maybe you've got a gondola under it. Maybe you've got a tarp under it catching it. We would have shark bite fittings for that. But the big thing about them is getting them in, getting them in quickly, so now you can go back and fix the other problem. These were great for that. And we literally had them from half inch, got all the way up to like two inch, I believe. We also had a sledgehammer there. So once you get it all clean and ready and you go to put this two inch cap on, if you need to drive that thing on there, you've got something there to help you do it. Now, I talked to the president of one of Sharkbite's competitors one day, 
And they had asked me, said, Roger, why do you talk bad about shark bite all the time? Well, I explained it to him. I said, because when I go into houses to fix leaks, if they're in the wall, nine out of 10 times, it's something that the tenant, the landlord, the homeowner, or the handyman fixed with shark bite fittings. I said, shark bite fittings are horrible. He said, Roger, actually, they're not. They're really good. They're designed well. But here's the big thing about it. They don't focus on teaching people the proper way to install them. Why do a lot of plumbers think they're okay? Because the plumber's going to take the time to prepare the pipe. He's going to bubble the outside. He's going to ring the inside. He's going to make sure there are no sharp little edges that may nick that O-ring. Because once you nick the O-ring, it's ruined. It's trash. Now, a good thing about shark bites is you can take them off. You can put them back on. They make a tool for that. Here's the thing, guys. Just like any other tool out there, if you use it right, it's great for what it was intended for. A quick fix. I don't think shark bites were ever designed for permanent installation, but a lot of people use them that way. So when I heard from the president of another company that competes with them, say, hey, look, these are good. It kind of opened my eyes. If the competitor thinks they're good, why do I think they're not? Now, I'm not trying to make excuses or reasons or anything like that, and I'm not ever going back on anything that I've ever said. We've fixed a ton of freaking leaks with those. But here's the thing. We also have the blast chamber. We've tested Shark Bite, another brand, and Presta Connect fittings. And you know what? I hate to say it. The Shark Bite and the other brand tested better than the Press to Connect. So your Pro Press machines and stuff like that, they don't quite have the staying power that the Push to Connect fittings do. So is there something different there? Absolutely. Is it great still? You know what? It'll work. If you're not hiding it in the wall, if you're not hiding it in the ceiling, if there is no access to it, even burying it under the slab, they tell you you can do it, but you've got to wrap it. You've got to protect it. Me? If I'm under a slab, I'm probably going to braze it. Now, knowing the difference between a temporary fix and a permanent solution and knowing when to use each is a hallmark of a true professional. It's about understanding the technology, the code, and the context of the job. This is the kind of advanced, nuanced knowledge that we focus on in the Becoming a Better Tradesperson course. We move beyond just a basic skills and whatnot. We don't even worry about that. But we teach you how to think like an expert, making the right call on every job to protect your customers and your reputation. If you're ready to elevate your skills to the next level, click the link in the description. And if you like this debate, check out Pex versus Copper Breakdown right here. I'll see you in the next video.